A year has passed since Russia invaded Ukraine. Since then, this war has seen several twists and turns. Russia captured some of Ukrainian territories and was forced to withdraw from others after facing tough counteroffensive. One such city is Kherson, which was under Russian occupation for nine months. But even after Ukraine reclaimed the city, it remains mostly deserted. We on correspondent in Asma Alexei has this ground report from the city. Listen in. We're in Kherson, and uh, what you see right in front of me is the Nipir River. Uh, it's a 2200 kilometer long river that starts from the western side of Russia, enters into Belarus, from there into Ukraine, and onwards to the Black Sea. You have to wear, it's not safe, so you have to wear a flak jacket continuously, even in the car. Uh, and this river was used to cross over from the Russian side uh, and land or deploy their forces over here in order to capture Kherson, which remained under Russian occupation for about nine months. It's strategically very important. Uh, there were 30,000 uh, forces that had left behind. Uh, Kherson remains a ghost town, essentially. And uh, even now, what, we, what we've what we been told is the fact that uh, there can be possible fire or there can be possible exposure. So therefore, people are not allowed to go closer to the river. Anas Malik, Kherson, Ukraine for Beyond, World is One. And now for more details, we are being joined by our correspondent, Anas Malik, live from Odessa. Hello to you, Anas. Now, Odessa faced the first major attack on the 27th of April, and this was when the Russian forces tried to disconnect the city of Odessa from the rest of the country. What is the situation like in Odessa now? Well, now the situation looks like or is seemingly that uh, uh, towards the uh, what we believe is the new normal. Uh, it's like the people of Ukraine have internalized the conflict. Uh, they've learned or they're learning to live with it. What you see behind me or what I see in front of me is is a seem uh, is a semblance of what we say is business as usual. It's not abandoned. It's not a ghost town. It's certainly not anything closer to what Mykolaiv or Kherson is, uh, what we where we were yesterday and the day before. Uh, but then again, there seems to be a grim fear. We were welcomed with the sounds of uh, uh, air raid sirens blaring and blasting through across the city. So that gives that hint that uh, the Ukrainian uh, air defense is not putting their guards down. We've been speaking to people uh, uh, on camera and off camera both. Uh, our report comes out tomorrow and beyond it will learn to, uh, uh, from here from Odessa tomorrow and people say that uh, uh, that they're not really scared anymore of these air raid sirens because they've become so desensitized because of these and it's been a year to the conflict they really hope that the conflict ends soon and uh, there is no second year to the conflict that the, that uh, they would have to see Alison. Right, and us and uh, U.S. President Joe Biden has said no F-16 fighters for now. What is Ukraine's response to this, and how will this impact the uh, the movement of the war going forward? Well, we're yet to see a formal response from uh, Ukraine on that, but uh, the response would be jittery. The, it would be in utter and sheer disappointment because uh, Ukraine has been heavily dependent on these arms and ammunitions and uh, their bid for more and more fighter jets. So this, uh, uh, this statement by President Biden, as you just referred to, it would be seen uh, as, a mo as, as g greater and bigger disappointment uh, because the Ukrainian side is gearing up for an offense uh, and a rather a counter, a counter attack on their part. Uh, as soon as the snow belts, the temperature right now, uh, as where I'm standing, it's currently about uh, two degrees uh, and it's expected to fall down about uh, minus six to minus seven. In parts of east, it, uh, it uh, drops down to about minus 20. So as and when the snow melts that we're expecting in the first week of April or in the second week of April, that's when the Ukrainian side is expecting uh, a, a, a counter or a, 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 an offense from the Russian side, a spring offensive and a counter offensive on their part that they are also planning. So uh, in their planning, this would be a major shocker that has come through and they would now be persuading their diplomatic uh, through their diplomatic channels and defense channels uh, to have somewhat of an alternate to these F-16s so that they are more equipped and well equipped in their fight as in when they go for a counter attack uh, against what is presumed to be a Russian attack that is incoming for what they are preparing for. Alison.
Right, and nice. thank you very much for bringing us all the latest details coming to us from Odessa. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.